That's what I'm talking about. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Arvanauts, and welcome, Speculate listeners, to a special Speculate slash Twitch channel event. This is episode five of our Blades in the Dark campaign with GM Brandon O'Brien. I am very excited to have everyone here. I'm excited to have everyone back for this campaign, which has been amazing and I think has run a little longer than anyone thought it would, which just means that we have a chance for more goodness, obviously. Um, so I hope everyone has been having fun uh, over the last few weeks to the extent that they can. Not, not that this has been a... It's 2020. But I hope you've been having as much fun as you can and been trying to stay as de-stressed and relaxed as you can be during these times. And I hope that this can be part of that experience as you watch this amazing crew about to set out again on the Cindered Seal adventure. But before we get there, just a couple of reminders here. If you have not done so already, if you are one of the Speculate listeners, thank you. And remember, you can find our podcast, Speculate. Uh, everywhere fine podcasts are uh, procured, uh, whatever they're calling it now, YouTube Music, which used to be Google Play Music, which used to be some other kind of music, um, Amazon Music Podcasts. Uh, you can also get it, of course, directly from our website, which is www.speculatesf.com, our actual play podcast where you can find myself, um, Gregory Wilson, Arvin Elleron here on Twitch, and my co-host, Mike Underwood um, with these actual play uh, series. So um, that is where you can get the podcast. For the folks who are watching on my Twitch stream, please make sure to follow on the channel. Please make sure to check out my YouTube with exclamation point ArvTube, Discord with exclamation point ArvCord, Twitter with exclamation point ArvTweets, and the website for that is ArvinElleron.com. On the financial side, exclamation point ArvShop, um, exclamation point ArvTreon is the Patreon for that channel. I'll talk more about the Patreon for Speculate in a minute. And of course, um, the sub button right under that video window currently sitting at 85 subs would love to see that go north of 85 and continue to do more stuff because it lets me pour money back into the channel and do things like what i'm about to describe in just a moment with this announcement that i'm going to make um so uh and then last but not least the publishing side of things for those who are interested my icarus and jelenic graphic novels which are currently going out to reviewers the retail versions of those will be out on november 10th from athis arts you can find out more about that with exclamation point icarus exclamation point library is my tales and tomes from the forbidden library DD 5e supplement and source book and adventure from alligator alley entertainment that's exclamation point library and exclamation point gray shade ks for more details about my gray shade kickstarter i'll be announcing very shortly whether that's uh, kickstarter for that's going to be happening in october or february of next year depends on things outside of my or the company's control but we will let you folks know about that very soon uh and last but certainly not least is exclamation point blm black lives matter as I've said many times, uh, this is a fundamental aspect of what we want to try to do with the channel um, is to support this. And so if you click exclamation point BLM, you will see uh, the link right now, the card for many, many resources associated with Black Lives Matter. I continue to check and try to update and adjust. But frankly, the link that I have there, I continue to check and it is itself updated all the time. Um, and so that makes a big difference, basically. Um, and I encourage everyone to check out the resources that are associated there. Now, with that said, I'm going to make this announcement uh, in just a moment. So I am going to I'm going to click on there so the folks know that we're ready to go. And I will apologize, as always, for interrupting them because I couldn't hear what they were saying. And then I'm going to unmute them. And then last but certainly not least, I'm going to move over there. And you can now see the crew is in front of you in all of their revealed glory. Um, and uh, before I hand things over to Brandon, I do want to make uh, this announcement. I've already made the announcement, but I want to highlight that one week from today, that is right, one week from today at what I believe is 8 p.m. Eastern, although I have to double check, but I believe it's 8 p.m. Eastern, we will be debuting... Brandon O'Brien's uh, Sound Clash TTRPG. The campaign is called The Clampdown. It is an all by POC cast, and we are going to be teasing out who those cast members are over the next few days. I am honored uh, to be hosting this. I'm extremely excited. I have been excited since Brandon first pitched it to me, which is why I wanted to announce this so th with uh, everyone here so that Brandon can then tell you how awesome the game that Brandon made is going to be. So I'm going to hand things over to Brandon and let Brandon introduce everybody but say, Brandon, I am super excited that you're hosting this game. So please tell the lovely people about that and then have a wonderful session, everyone. And now I will shut up. Brandon, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. That was very excited of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, Sound Clash, the clampdown is coming very, very soon. Um, I'm literally um, 
presently um, dotting my I's and crossing my T's in terms of the cast. I'm very excited to like finally announce that. Like literally, I'm uh, reaching out to our final cast members as we as we speak. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to finally get an opportunity to play test my game, Sound Clash. Um, I'm really excited about this story in particular, about this campaign in particular. Um, and I'm really excited to share the cast with you when I'm ready. I have so many feelings about it. Like I literally just saw the draft logo for the campaign. I can't wait to see like the actual overlay and stuff. So this is gonna be rad. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. And you will hear more about that uh, very, very soon. Um, as for tonight, uh, we are playing a completely different game, which is Blades in the Dark, um, in particular. Uh, welcome to our latest session of The Case of the Cinded Seal. Um, again, I'm Brandon O'Brien. Um, I am a writer, a poet, the poetry editor of Fire, a magazine of Black Speculative Fiction. Um, and I'm really excited to um, follow up from uh, last month's session, but before we uh, get back into that, I would like everyone else to introduce themselves, starting with Yoi. Hello, I am Yoi, and I play the character who was unfortunately revealed recently to actually not be made of meat, Crossroads, pronouns he, they. Um, I am a game writer and hopefully going to dabble in short stories soon, so that's me. Nice. Uh, Mike? Hi, I'm Michael R. Underwood. Um, I'm one of the co-hosts of Speculate, along with Greg, who is hosting us here on Twitch for those watching live. Uh, to everyone listening, thanks so much for joining us as we continue this campaign. Um, I am a writer, podcaster, and publishing person at large. My latest novel, Annihilation Aria, which is a found family space opera adventure, uh, came out late last month and has gotten some great responses from people. I've had a really fun time promoting it, including getting to do a really cool uh, two author event with a uh, co-player here, Valerie. Uh, so we had a great time there with the, the Ivy Bookshop. And that book, our Annihilation Aria, is available in ebook, print, and audio. Um, you should be able to get it basically everywhere. I play Ring Dalmore, who is a haunted war vet from the war with Scovland. And um, so war vet kind of turned neighborhood uh, den parent slash uh, protector who has wound up with a lovely crew of people uh, and none of us have a clear sense of what's actually going on. We're just all trying to not, not die. Um, my pronouns are he, him, Ring's pronouns are they, them. And that's me. Okay, uh, next, Valerie. Hello, I am Valerie Valdez. I am a novelist primarily, also a short fiction writer and poet. Uh, my latest novel, Prime Deceptions, comes out next month. Ah, uh, chilling effect, the first in that series is already out, so you can go buy that as well. I am playing Skelly, who definitely likes to eat. <laughs> and last but not least, Iori. Iori Kusano, pronouns she, they. Clarion West class of 2017, fiction in Apex Magazine, nonfiction in Uncanny and Strange Horizons. I play Ashlyn Farrows, who is an antiques dealer who has definitely always lived in Duskwall. Of course. Um, and uh, with that, we uh, begin our uh, newest session of the case of the Cinded Seal. Uh, when last we left off, um, everybody was having a time. <laughs> Ashlyn Farrows could not, for whatever reason, avoid constant imagery of perhaps the most annoying god in their pantheon. <laughs> um, Crossroads saw Runa's ghost very insistently, and the response to witnessing Runa's ghost um, immediately triggered the most Twin Peaks thing that Crossroads has ever experienced. Crossroads um, doesn't even watch Twin Peaks. Crossroads <laughs> is insulted. <laughs> and both Crossroads and Ring, 
who has also been having quite a time this time, have uh, just witnessed what seems to be um, visions of not, if not the place that they should go next, a place that they should go soon, um, with very ominous uh, imagery related to why, in particular, they should uh, venture in that direction. Um, but before we do any action, um, I would like to let uh, my uh, players know that I have updated our crew sheet. Uh, one of the things that I was very eager about when it came to this game was I wanted to test out a new crew type called Fugitives. Um, at the time, I only knew very little of what they did. Um, but I was very eager to like give people the opportunity to play um, essentially like um, a group of not very criminals who have been wrongly accused of a crime that definitely did happen. Um, and now I am cap now I am uh, actually very excited to say that there is a fugitive's crew sheet in Roll Twenty for you to all view. Uh, you should be able to see it um, in the journal as the fugitives. Um, please let me know that you can see it. I hope that you can all see it. I cannot. See all it. I have is bio and info, and that is blank, my friend. Yeah. Oh. Hey, I'm going to fix that now. <laughs> we have seen it in the Discord, though, previously. Honest. Yes. yes. Um, because I would also like uh, folks in the chat to know that it is also a physical object that you can buy at, on my um, itch store. It's on um, the rising tide that itch.io slash fugitives. Um, so if you want to, if you are playing a Blades in the Dark game and you want to uh, take a little of this flavor with you, um, it's there for you to see. Um, hmm. Right, so I'm going to make sure that this is in all players' journals. Cat. Yep, it's cat time. Oh. <laughs> Valerie, which charming friend are we seeing today? Well, this is Wash, and Wash decided that he was definitely going to do a uh, very cat thing right before we started, which was to hurl on the carpet. So I had to clean that up in a rush. Yeah. My sweet baby. Yikes. So yep. please let me know if you can see it now. Please tell me you can um, see it now. Should we refresh the page? Uh, hopefully you should not yeah, have to. Yeah, let's refresh. <laughs> Is Wash going to be playing um, your character's pet as well? So we actually have not yet established what pet I have. And so I don't know if we're going to do that in this edition of our game and in, in this episode, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> you can definitely headcanon well, him. don't see it. Mm. This, is a yeah. this is a disaster. <laughs> this is standard rolled 20 though like yeah. this happened the other day in a different game i'm playing where we're using the valor system mm. uh, i see the character Actually, sheet, I... sheet for it now ah can you see it oh, oh yes. thank god there yay. it goes nice. okay. yay. oh man problem solved cool so <laughs> wait uh... the bat cave has a name like a different <laughs> yes name? it does <laughs> Um, they're it has literally a very cool name. It has a very cool name. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally the burrows under the graveyard, but you don't know that, so you call it the Bat Cave. <laughs> I feel um, like that's a slightly more badass name than we've actually earned. <laughs> Maybe when the crew gets an advance, what we yeah. actually unlock is the real name. No, 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 it's a cave under a graveyard, so we should call it the Grave Cave. The Grave Cave! <laughs> oh, God. Grave Cave, Grave Cave. Oh, my gosh. Like, literally, as you started speaking, I was like, this is where this is going, and I'm here for it. <laughs> Noting this with great acrimony in my heart. Um, 
Right. This is so what I as... get for setting it in a cemetery. <laughs> so, as you can see, um, your crew doesn't have a name. Your crew doesn't have a reputation yet, but I will ask you that question in a bit. And you, you only have a few things. Your lair is hidden and secure because it's underground. Um, you have fine documents because Runa prepared them all for you. Your contact is Runa because, wow, last session was, a, was quite a thing. Um, and you have one special ability, which is no traces. When you keep an operation quiet or make it look like an accident, you get half the rep value of the target rounded up instead of zero. When you end the downtime with zero heat, take plus one rep. Now, Shouldn't be that hard to make things look like an accident given how many things we've done by accident so far, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, you can say that that last cop um, just got struck by lightning. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm quite like so hard that it's cracked his face before he before he disintegrated. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it happens in this city. Everyone knows it's a very dangerous place. Mm -hmm. Cop was clearly wearing some kind of um, spirit bane mask, yeah. and uh, those are known to absorb some electricity. So it must have cracked under the pressure, but it still wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. A wizard did it. Yes, mm -hmm. a so, panicked wizard. Yeah. <laughs> So I did the math previously based on all of the sessions that you have presently experienced um, because the crew advancement uh, triggers for the fugitives are um, you successfully escape capture or gain information about the mystery surrounding you. You contend with challenges above your current station yeah. You bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one or express the goals, drives, inner conflict or essential nature of the crew. I think very easily you have enough XP for two more special abilities. I would like you to discuss what you think those are right now. Oh. And we are we are tier zero. You are currently tier zero. Oh. With mm, stronghold. Mm. Mm. Underground pathway sounds very exciting. Ah, the uh, what you earn for underground pathways is plus one and what well, plus one D engagement for all stealth plans. Which would be very useful, obviously, for Ash, because we haven't given Ash opportunities to do much stealth things yet. I feel like the flavor of what we've done so far um, would gesture toward, I hate the color blue. And mostly I want to draw attention to that ability uh, because big mood. Yes. <laughs> um, the ability itself is plus one effect bonus whenever fighting with or fleeing from the blue coats, which would have been very useful several fights ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I just want to note for the chat that the flavor text that I added for, the, for that ability is simply a cab. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but in terms of abilities, I think Can't Fool Me looks amazing. You may push yourself when gathering information to do one of the following. Tell when someone is lying or hiding something. Discover a hidden object or location. Intuit that a seemingly mundane fact has significance to your investigation. So one of those three things. That would be really useful since we're dealing with so many hidden objects and stuff now. Yeah, it seems like that one is a thing that fits with what we've been doing. Yeah, if we're taking two abilities, then... I think we definitely need the cop fighting one. <laughs> and Can't Fool Me seems like it will advance the plot. Mm -hmm. Another one, too, is Born to Run, which, as the panic goes taser, um, <laughs> seems, <laughs> um, each PC may add plus one action rating to prowl, finesse, or tinker up to a max rating of three. Mm -hmm. uh, and Brandon, did you... Do you mean to say that we should 
choose only abilities or take two advances? Um, uh, all I will say is that your crew advancement has finished twice and you can use them, you can use those two points however you, may, how, however you wish. Okay, so we could theoretically take a claim to get those underground pathways. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember how much claims cost. This presently escapes me. Hmm. I'm gonna if they're them. more expensive than the special abilities, I don't think it's worth it at this point. The abilities will probably do more for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're mostly hanging out in, in the grave cave, so. <laughs> Please tell me you're not really going to call this the thing. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It rhymes, uh, Brandon. It rhymes, Brandon. Mm -hmm. As a poet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. As, as a poet, this hurts you. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, terribly. <sighs> um, so it looks like under crew upgrades, one of the things you can do is an addition to your lair, like the ritual sanctum of the cult, which I think is just taking a claim. And when you get an advance, you can get two upgrades or one special ability, if I'm reading the text correctly. Okay. Um, so if we took underground pathways, we could also get something like workshop um gear training something like that uh but i'm fine to just do abilities if we think that there's two that we really like and it makes it easier to just to keep moving yeah I will say that I think that uh, special abilities and claims are equally useful depending on what you have in mind. But I do think that the special abilities that you have already selected will be particularly useful. I think either way, we are definitely going to take I hate the color blue. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. so, so I'm definitely, I'm definitely putting that down then. So do we want the the flexibility of action bonus or the ability utility, um, the ability and flexibility of can't fool me or something else. My vote is for can't fool me. Okay. Crossroads is a more reactive character than the others. So I think I will leave that second ability taking can't fool me up to everyone else. Just because I think gameplay wise, uh, how I play Crossroads won't really change. Valerie, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'm I feel like I'm in the same boat because I feel like as a more fighty character, um, I'm already like like the A cab helps me. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like having something that is more useful to the non-fighty people is probably good. Yeah, I think something that lets us chase down leads and or effectively engage with the like the mission slash score system, mm -hmm. since we've just we've been in free play for several sessions mm -hmm. and scores seem likely to be able to let us pursue the types of information we want. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So with so that means that we're confirming can't fool me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and that's all of your fugitives advancement for now. But we will see how that goes at the end of the session. Um, with that being said, um, since you mentioned scores, the last thing that uh, anybody experienced, the last thing that everybody experienced was. Just before attempting to make a trip to Brightstone, um, both Ring and Crossroads had a lot of very 
eager experiences from the ghost field Yikes. that insisted that maybe they should go to Dunslow instead. Mm-hmm. Yep, and was that and that was while Ash and Skelly were out. Mm-hmm. I believe that Ash and no, Skelly had wrong. just returned to find Ring getting a little bit electrocuted. Not very <laughs> electrocuted, but you know, zapped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a brief zapping. Crossroads got screamy. Everybody was jettisoned to the edges of the bad cave. Um, yeah. It was a friendship tickle. Whoops, that JPG. <laughs> Ring had a war flashback that also had layers of images upon them. Um, yeah, it's, we, we had uh, excitement with what happens when character traumas overlap. Yeah, very fun. I'm sorry that I did that to you all. Um, <laughs> well, like, I want to be very clear. I, as a player, saw, hmm, this seems like a thing that will go that way. And then I said <laughs> to the players, hey, I'm going to escalate. And then we did the thing. Yes. So. With that I also take some responsibility. Yes. With that being said, literally the last words were Irish were Ash Fires confirming that um, yes, we should probably do the thing. Um, yep. And you were in the middle of planning, so I guess you can very well shift that plan all the way to Dunslow if you wish. Uh, but that means that I need to um, know what your plan was. Let's so, see. We were going to go into Dunslow. Had we determined whether or not we were going to take Crossroads with us? Because uh, no. I do believe that we had lost a great deal of Crossroads disguise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we may need to dress Crossroads up again before we can take it out into polite company. Mm. Mm-hmm. Or even in polite company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Legit. Um, I, my inclination would be to keep the group together. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Maybe Don't plot a route. Party. Yeah, plot a route that goes by Crossroads' former abode, so that we can first scope the area, see if anyone is hanging out nearby, and then possibly sneak inside and grab some garments. Is that theoretically possible? Let me check a map. Do we have any hats left that we can throw on top of poor Crossroads? <laughs> I mean, so Crossroads and Skelly are about the same size. So the other option okay. is Skelly goes and gets some clothes for mm-hmm. Crossroads. So not that Skelly has a vast wardrobe, but <laughs> presumably at least one change of clothes. I would like to confirm for the players that if you are indeed headed to Dunslow, you will not be able to pass by Crossroads uh, living quarters. Mm-hmm. It's that, um, okay. further, that's further east, while Brightstone is further north from where you are. Yeah, Does the Grave Cave have any curtains or fairly thin carpets? I'm sorry, Crossroads. <laughs> no, it does not. <laughs> Uh, where is where is Skelly's place? Is it on the way? Um, Has it been established? Can it become? We have way? not established. Okay. Um, so if you want to say you live in Crow's Foot or Char Hollow, we can very well do that. I mean, that, that means sounds, that you're on the way. That sounds reasonable to assume. Let me pull up the map. Oh, 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 I'm the map, I'm the map. (laughs) (laughs) The world map is on page 309. Blades in the Dark is really glad that its its character sheets don't have where do you live on them, or else (laughs) everybody would already be doomed. Yep. (laughs) Ding. Okay, so <laughs> so the bat cave, which I'm not calling the other thing, is in the docks, <laughs> and between the docks and Dunslow is Crow's Foot, Char Hollow, and a large block uh, for Ironwood uh, Ironhook Prison. Um, Thank you, Mike. 
you can very easily decide do you want to go north and then come back south but that would be an unnecessarily long walk mm -hmm. yeah i feel like the less we have crossroads outside the better honestly mm -hmm. yeah i think i just got disconnected no uh -oh. you're here we can hear you here, yeah yeah you're here mm -hmm. Wait. Oh, I, maybe not. Uh oh. I think he is froze. No, he's not frozen. No, no, he, he's moving. <laughs> be very interesting if, if we if we were all still hearing Brandon, but Brandon couldn't hear any of us. Oh no! Oh, I, no, I, I see his see. mic doing a thing. What happened is I could see you, and that, but for for a brief moment I couldn't hear you. But oh. I can hear you now. Okay. So, I'm sorry, I think I think crow, crow's foot is it looks like the the better um, mm -hmm. option just for flavor and location. So mm -hmm. let's we'll assume that Skelly's place okay. is on crow's foot. Yeah. So for the sake of assumption, you if you head to Dunslow, you can stop in crow's foot and do any manner of things. Mm -hmm. Could see Skelly's place. <laughs> it's a room. It's oh, we get to see your like, pet. Oh, yes. Oh, no, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Uh, Onward nice. to Skelly's. Let's get some mm -hmm. clothes onto Crossroads. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, Skelly, how tall are you again? Six feet. <laughs> uh, crossroads. Um, how, how tall do you think is a large tall frame? I think we've previously established that you are still quite taller than everyone else here. I I, I am large and in charge. That that's my Ooh. height. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens when we get to Skelly's abode. Then yeah, I oh, mean, no. Crossroads has worn Skelly's coat before, so yes, mm -hmm. that was successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Albeit maybe tight. I don't know. Maybe just okay. don't loan Crossroads any trousers because they're going to turn into high waters. <laughs> oh god. Um, so while everybody is doing the thing, I would like uh -oh. everybody uh -oh. to give me... Uh-oh. Uh... I can't tell you what role, but I will say uh, remember that the cops are looking for you and ask you to make any role that you see fit. I guess prowl? Uh, prowl would be useful here, yes. How, yes. how hard would I have to go to consort to get use of a boat to take us down the water in, to the east? east of these districts. Hmm. Um, right, so before, before I answer that question, I will tell you that it is perfectly possible for you to take a ship from the docks all the way to um, a pair in Dunslow, but you will not be able to, you will not be able to stop uh, by Skelly's first. And you will have to you'll have to travel to Crow's Foot and back if you wanted to do that. Then I'm happy to to wait for other people's approaches, ideas. Mm. I think that keeping Crossroads as covered up as possible should be a priority because Crossroads is extremely conspicuous, <laughs> also very prone to panicking. <laughs> exactly. The last thing we need is someone spotting crossroads and screaming, stop that hull. And now we have another chase scene on our hands. Yikes. Mm. I could then use consort to uh, kind of talk to a couple of friends of friends and encourage uh, people to kind of make, uh, make noise enough that basically causes uh, noise in the signal of kind of the cops trying to, ch to pursue anybody. Oh, there's a fight on this corner. Something's going on over yeah. there. Mm -hmm. If Ring can arrange diversions, that would be fantastic. 
that would indeed be very useful. Uh, I'm trying to think of special things that I could do, but I'm just thinking of panicking real hard and <laughs> annihilating everything in our vicinity, and then we can go to Dunslow in peace. But I don't oh think that's God. what we want to do. <laughs> Probably not. No, so I think I will <laughs> stick with so I'll, I'll stick with prowling as crossroads. Brandon, can you tell us what our position is for a prowl roll? Or for any of these right. roles, actually. Um, anyone who is prowling is prowling at risky position and standard effect. Okay. Uh, ring, before anybody rolls. Uh, are you still going to consort? Yeah, I think maybe that looks like a setup roll. Uh, before the before the prowl rolls, because I'm changing the position or and or the right. effect. Uh, this is actually true. Uh, remind me what your remind uh, remind me again what your uh, actual intent is. Uh, my intent is to basically create social noise in the neighborhood that will less let us pass more effectively, even with a conspicuous party member. Ah, um, I will say that your effect is, hmm. I will say that your position is desperate and your effect is standard. Um, I don't have a whole lot of stress to spare, but it would be really nice to succeed on this. Um, would anybody be able to give me an assist die? Um, I might, Ash might be, be able, able to. to. Yeah, I could be one of the people doing the distracting type stuff. Um, right, and or I could potentially use tracking to find the cops that need to be distracted along the way. Yeah, because I think it, it would be pretty easy for you to be able to track crossroads and or the rest of us. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to do something that would take you farther away from us and then be able to get back. Mm -hmm. That all makes sense to me. I think either Skelly or Ash could do that. Yeah. Um. Okay, um, Skelly, are you going to do that? Yeah, I mean, I feel like Skelly could either potentially take to the rooftops depending on the density of the buildings here or just blend into the crowd in a way that she is on the prowl for um, specifically cops basically and or keeping track of where my people are behind me such that if someone comes up in front of me, I can backtrack, basically like a scout, I guess. Okay, so now like the stack of operations that need to take place is clear in my brain. Um, Skelly takes one stress mm -hmm. and I need Skelly first now to uh, give me a fortune roll. Two fortune dice. roll, you got it. Two dice? Okay. Yes. Boop. Ooh. Oop, let me see. Hmm. I rolled a two and a six. Yeah, sorry. Two and six. Uh, good. Because you roll a six, I will tell you that nothing happens. Okay. Uh, so that means that, uh, Ring, you can now give me your roll. All right. So this is a... Desperate consort with mm -hmm. standard effect. Standard effect with plus one die. And I have one bonus die. Oh. Ah. Not uh, a crit, but a six. A six, a uh, five, and a four. So this is the part where we provide like a Fargo-esque montage of like. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs> of like uh, neighborhood grandmothers and uh, quarrelsome couples 
who are like going out of their way to make very noisy complaints about absolutely nothing that is taking place between uh, the docks and um, anything east uh, of that direction. Like almost every block of the docks, someone is like announcing a fire that is really just someone lit two matchsticks and held them to their hand and got burnt. Um, or uh, I granny calls to uh, ask the blue coats to get their cat out of a tree. And as soon as the cat comes down, they're like, whoop, go back up there. Um, Brandon, can I, add takes... little, uh, can I add a little bit of flavor? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe what this looks like is that this is a move that you do, that people in uh, Duskwall just do all the time. And uh, to signal it, you put um, like blue and white laundry out, but you put them right next to each other. Um, and everybody knows to not do that otherwise, because when you put that laundry out, what you're saying is like basically get in, make noise to deal with the blue coats. So it's almost like a flag code in the city. Somebody distract the cops. And we're seeing yep. one version of it here. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I will say, uh, ring knows just for flavor purposes, is that um, typically this becomes, typically this process is only um, easily afforded to people like that neighbors already know kind of deserve that kind of cover. So you really haven't earned that yet. So the work that you've done just now is actually like the hardest you've ever had to work to convince um, your neighbors to actually give you this kind of leeway. And there will be a point where that will be incredibly beneficial to you, um, which is also a thing that you know, because again, you've never had to ask for this, this much assistance from your neighbors before. Um, with that being said, uh, everyone who uh, wanted to prowl, um, your, I will say now that your um, position is controlled, Woo. but your effect is still standard. Okay. No bonus dice? No bonus dice. Okay. Uh-oh. That's a five and a six uh, for Ash. That's a four and a one for Crossroads. Oh, no. If a four is still a four is still a success. Um, can that be improved? Success if success. Skelly gives Crossroads her coat. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing has already happened, which means okay. that a thing still needs to uh, visibly be observed. Um, Oopsies. <laughs> so. Well. <laughs> I will say that. In fact, I will say as a result that Skelly notices this. That, yeah, that both Skelly and Ash uh, notice that someone has glanced at Crossroads. <laughs> but they don't get to actually, uh, but actually no. Uh, Ash gets to like, fully fully observe that this is a, a genuinely a, a well-dressed gentleman um like he's literally like wearing an ascot and a military style jacket in um, this neighborhood oh yeah like he's not supposed to be here um and you notice him very distinctly mm. um he's not somebody that you recognize but you can now um point him out um if you had to and he is as not soon as the same well-dressed man who came to Ash's shop, but he is a conspicuously well-dressed man, you're saying? Yes. Gotcha. Um, and as soon as he sees that you see him, he's off. And as soon as he's taken off, uh, Skelly doesn't get a chance to uh, make out anything about him at all. Does Crossroads but both of you... notice him from Nope, over? nope, nope, you didn't okay. see him. <laughs> okay. He's gone. Well, sometimes crossroads is just um, it just um, uh, oblivious to things like that. That's what happens when you're made of meat. 
Yeah. It's too it's too focused mm -hmm. on maintaining its meat illusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but other than that, you all safely make it to uh, Skelly's abode. As soon um, as the team is reunited, Ash is going to warn them what she saw. Crossroads is seems going relevant. To, Crossroads is going to not say anything, but it does move suddenly towards the door like it's going to go outside and crickets the first person it sees. Ooh, can we not though? What's <laughs> clarification? First... Does Crossroads have any crickets left in inside it? No. Do I have any crossroads uh crickets left? You have like you have like the the stray legs of some of the dead crickets in your legs, um, in oh. your hull feet. But like other oh. than that, like no, you are no longer the home of life crickets. Oh, okay then. <laughs> it as we, as we are asking for the uh, descriptions. Um, can I have Skelly describe the outside and later the inside of your home? To uh, the rest so or yeah, I feel like friend. I feel like Skelly is living in uh, essentially like a tenement kind of building. It's it's something of a cross between a, a an apartment building that has way too many studios that are real small and almost like a boarding house kind of thing. Um, so every room, you know, this this may have once been a home that was a family type abode, but at this point. Uh, it's basically like 10 extremely small single rooms um, and everybody has a chamber pot and <laughs> access to a uh, couple of communal showers and that's about it. Uh, it is not very well kept, but um, it does not appear to have anyone... Uh, it, it appears to be guarded, <laughs> let's put it that way. Like it's the kind of place where the people who are hanging around outside are doing so to discourage anyone else from hanging around outside who may not be wanted. Um, Has Crossroads been here before? I don't know. Um, Can you cook from home, Skelly? No, no, there is no kitchen. Crossroads has this. never seen this place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, no. This th it does. It is not a place that has there. There is again. There's a communal type kitchen, but Skelly does not make use of it for the most part because it is typically in disarray because of the people who are using it um, are not doing a great job of keeping it clean, maintained, and so Skelly mostly gets food off the streets. Okay. Um, After Crossroads so, is convinced to not go running out into the street to crickets people, it then is absolutely fixated on examining the place of Skelly. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just kind of like like steps up to a central door, basically. You go inside and it's hallway with rooms. Um, so like if, if you were to look into some of the rooms, they would clearly be converted like a parlor or a sitting room, a conservatory, that kind of thing. That's like, this used to be a house for one or two families. Now it is not. There's a staircase leading up to the second floor um, and just rooms on either side flanking it. The entrance is basically in the middle of the building. So hallway goes to the back. There are like, say about uh six rooms on the first floor and then probably about as many on the second floor mm -hmm. so here are some questions mm -hmm. uh who else lives here mm -hmm. um who among them are in the whole in this place right now and what's your relationships with the people who are present here Okay, so I am going to say, for the sake of convenience, based on my character sheet, that one of my contacts, who is a physiker, lives here, Melvere. Mm -hmm. um, he lives on the first floor uh, in one of the front rooms because it's easily accessible to his clientele. And, um, and so he's the guy that everyone goes to when they get shanked pretty much um but he also uh doles out medicines for other residents of the neighborhood in the building um 
does not do a super brisk business, but you know, he's the guy that you come to in the middle of the night if you just got shot or zapped by a ghost. So um, yeah, kind of a emergency medic type guy who can also do basic healing, you know, drafts and headache remedies and things like that. Um, so he's up in the front. And uh, I would say that the other folks who work, who live here probably are um, either engaged in the clandestine arts in some form or fashion, and thus keep a pretty low profile themselves. They may or may not be present at the, right now. Uh, and then other folks are just kind of like dock workers who don't live at the docks or, you know, Char Hollow workers who don't live in Char Hollow. Um, so just this is kind of a crossroads of people who um, they can afford the rent here and it's kind of in the middle of stuff. So that's good enough. <laughs> it's the rooms are small enough that spending time in them is not everyone's favorite thing to do. So the odds of it being more empty than full at any given time are probably high. People are more likely to be outside wandering the streets doing literally anything else except for Melvier because his job is to be there. Okay. Um, all of this is very uh, fascinating information. Um, the the last thing that I would want to know as a result, since we're I'm going to say that like at least Crossroads has stumbled very awkwardly into your individual space, mm -hmm. um, trying to learn more about how Skelly lives. Um, what does that space look like on the inside? All right, so there is a, um, a we, will, we will charitably call it a mattress on one part of the floor. Um, it has definitely seen better days, was possibly dumpster dived. And there is an equally um, sort of uncomfortable looking chair and a small table that is not it's more like a coffee table or a side table in, in terms of it's a, it's a small table and you it, there's no chair to sit at it. You would sit on the floor to use it. Um, just envision like the, the worst possible dorm room that you could possibly envision. Like this is a person who, you know, not only has no budget, but also has no interest in doing anything <laughs> it's like this is a place where sometimes skelly eats and sits down and goes to sleep <laughs> um yeah so oh the only other things that you would see um there is a, a garbage receptacle because mm -hmm. takeout stuff you know will either come in a reusable like either skelly will have like a like a napkin type handkerchief thing that she grabs food in or it will come in some sort of disposable receptacle um, so it would end up in the trash and a chamber pot that is clean because Skelly is not that gross um, and uh, there is a food dish and a water bowl. Ooh, I imagine Ooh. that uh, that means something in particular. Is there a pet nearby? There is, <laughs> as they are entering the room, there is a sudden scratching at the window <laughs> because Skelly's pet understands that mama's home. So Skelly goes and opens the window and in comes a coal gray cat <laughs> who is just appallingly large and missing half an ear scarred in multiple places and the size of is just again like a small dog size just this is not <laughs> this is a cat who is some sort of platonic ideal of brawler cat <laughs> so has, has crossroads ever seen a cat before <laughs> um yeah you've seen you've seen cats like okay there are strays that will often like go out of their way to try to eat a death seeker crow. It's not a pleasant experience for a small cat. Um, death eater crows will mess you up. Um, but you've never seen a cat this large. Okay. Um, 
Because I was about to say, if Crosses has never seen a cat before, Crossroads would have panicked. <laughs> um, so, I mean, obviously no one else here has ever seen a cat this size. You've seen other living things mm -hmm. this size. This is <laughs> not a domesticated cat. This is a small jaguar cub um, in size. Um, so yeah, that's... it's like the difference between a crow and a raven. Where with a crow, you're like, "Oh, that's a pretty big bird." And with a raven, you're like, "Ah, they come that large? Why?" <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And you see, like this large, like um, for a moment, as it comes through the window, it seems less like a cat and more like um, being like attacked by a large shadow, and it just like flies through the window and um, just glomps Skelly. Mm -hmm. and everyone everyone who is in its near vicinity can hear it not so much purr as like what a growl would sound like if it came from the depths of hell itself and was just too far away for you to hear it clearly it's like a um, purr that broke so it's almost like a crackle <laughs> yeah but it is like licking Skelly's face very eagerly um and so I heard son what is that thing <laughs> Crossroads goes like a really alarmed bird and stretches <laughs> up to its full height and hits the ceiling. Because I imagine yeah. the ceiling is quite low. So it's just like... The rest, of, <laughs> the rest of you hear what sounds like a very nearby duck klaxon go off right next to like right where Crossroads beak is supposed to be. Then you hear some concrete break. <laughs> <clears throat> it's my cat. Oh, the charmer. Eh. <laughs> As mm. Ash says that, it turns right to Ash and just like stares at you with like eyes are yellow. Eyes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very yellow. Yeah. For, it just like it takes you in and it looks to you like it's not like distracted by you or anything like that. It looks to you like it's prepared to hunt you if necessary. Ash looks back at that cat and knows that, like, if all five feet of her got into a fight with that cat, she would lose. <laughs> so Crossroads... That cat probably weighs a solid third of what she does. Uh, it's at That's least, like, a 30-pound cat, yeah. Yeah. Cross, you hear Crossroads' gears creaking with how powerfully they are grinding to not move and also the low undertone ghosty crackle of a tuning about to happen but very carefully not happening <laughs> mm. so as is... that is taking place um someone enters through like what is generally what is essentially like the central hallway of the bottom floor and it's melvir mm. Uh, would you like to describe Melvir? Um, sure, why not? Uh, I'm going to say that Melvir is um, edging his way out of middle age. He's on the on the slow slow boat to older. Um, he's got uh, bald on top, tufts of hair on top of his ears, kind of thing. Um, wearing a coat that is intended to make him look more professional, um, which it would if it weren't kind of yellowing grayish, that, that color that white um, eventually becomes when you don't have the proper tools to wash it with. Uh, mm -hmm. And he is, uh, he has a pair of um, like, you know, the pince-nez glasses mm -hmm. and he does not have any facial hair. He takes good care of that, but uh, he is also wearing um, a pair of gloves, just in cases. And he he looks um, kind of self assured, um, but he he has just kind of an air of nervousness in the sense that he never knows who's going to show up at his place and what they're going to want. So. Well, surprise! Yeah, yeah. here we go. Because, like, I'm I'm going to say that, like, when he enters the when he enters your space, 
he's holding um like those racks that um hospitals use to like uh hold ivs mm. he's holding like a rusted version of a rusted kind of antique version of that mm -hmm. um like pre enters the room almost ready to charge the first person he meets um and he sees crossroads's back first and swings very eagerly towards crossroads' side. He swings at just, me? Yeah, he swings at you. Okay, In fact, can I specify me a he roll crossroads. Okay, what? because my because my head is in the ceiling. He doesn't see yes. my head. <laughs> nope, he he just
propelling forward by the sheer effort of being frightened. <laughs> yes. Hello, it's a Greg. Hi, a Greg. Oh no. Oh no. Yike. Mm -hmm. Perhaps not, as long as nobody is electrocuted. Yes. <laughs> this That's this campaign good. in particular, if this campaign in particular has taught any one of us anything, it is that maybe being electrocuted is not the ideal. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the moral of this campaign is you can be electrocuted by- You are fine, Arv. <laughs> Thank you so very much for being patient. Mm -hmm. Just a have... little love zap. <laughs> mm -hmm. This would be a lovely time to remind everyone in the chat that Greg is a wonderful person who has a Patreon. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody is like actively. Yeah, no, we're actively. Yeah, very hearing and seeing all of us. Okay. Do I need to give host back to <laughs> Greg to make this work? All right. Actually, they didn't hear that because my mic was muted in OBS. That's good. That was stuff I wouldn't have necessarily wanted to have been talking about to the entire world. Uh, sure. Just give me one second, but everybody. they still heard me. OBS. They heard <laughs> you. Yes, they did. Sorry. Yes. Go on. I had no idea that we were actually live back in OBS. Sorry about that, folks. I had a power surge at home um, because, as I was just explaining to the lovely folks, um, for reasons I won't get into, uh, my stove blew out a couple of days ago, so we haven't had a stove. So the person is here installing the new stove, and we had a power surge because 2020 blows. So that's that's basically what happened there. And so uh, when we had a power surge, that affected this. I apologize profusely, and I will have everyone up and running. Sorry, Brennan, you can continue with whatever it was you were saying. I apologize. I didn't know that we were actually back live again. <laughs> so that's pretty good by OBS, actually. OBS is like, I'm getting back on, Chief. I can do it. I didn't yeah. realize it could do that. Anyway. Right. OBS is just like oh, waiting George. patiently at the gates of Twitch. <laughs> it is. It's like, wait, wait, wait. So OBS was doing this, the thing that Skelly's pet was doing. Yes. <laughs> exactly exactly okay i think everyone is back hey. on i am so sorry i will that shouldn't happen again according to the technician who i just very politely asked if we can stop having surges of power and he's like oh it won't happen again i'm like okay so i'm going to stop my video and shut up that's and let everyone what continue. Said. i'm really sorry this was the, clearly my check-in the way i check in is i just shut off the power to my house for five seconds that's that's how i do things here thank um, you so much greg yeah thank, thank, you. thank you so sorry, very everybody. very much Reminder again to chat, um, exclamation point Arftrion, if you want to make sure that Greg has money to pay for things that will often break when things like these happen. Um, so yeah, um, what? now I need to know what was the last thing the chat even heard happen. Yeah, well, because yeah. We were up, because a, a physical was about to attempt to break crossroads. Uh, so I need to know if the audience saw that we rolled dice, um, because I, think... I recall that's going kind of badly, <laughs> because uh, Crossroads rolled a two. Yes. And I asked Crossroads to roll on a tune. Mm -hmm. uh, desperate have... position. Okay. Desperate. Uh, did I give you an effect? Uh, no, you did not give me an effect yet. Your effect is great. Yeah, your effect is great. Well. <gasps> and one extra oh, die. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Did I already, you already roll? I rolled already, but it doesn't seem to be happening. I don't see it. OK, so I will attune again just to confirm it is desperate. Desperate, with... is def desperate position, great effect, with one extra die, because you were already about to panic anyway. Yes, mm. one extra die. Oh, oh no! Uh, that's a one, one a six, six, and a six. six. <laughs> oh my god. Why? <laughs> no, stop killing people. <laughs> so, um, 
He was a This is everything that happens. Oh, why? Stop killing people is basically... Skelly. <laughs> Skelly, who is regularly very attentive anyway, and knows what Melvira sounds like anyway, notes very well um, that uh, Melvira is very obviously walking up the hallway very grumpily, as is typically his want. Um, Ring notices um, him enter this space as well. Um, both of them see very obviously that he uh, holds up this rack ready to swing at Crossroads. And the very moment that it collides with Crossroads' chassis, it bends like almost totally perpendicular across uh, its chest. And then there is a burst of light and you see Melvry fly off into the other room. <laughs> Can we resist any of the consequences involved there? I mean, it, you, very luckily enough, all that happens is like a flash of light for you all. Um, like uh, Skelly's cat like leaps into the air very briefly um, and then comes back to rest. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. You can't do anything for Melvira until you find him. Oh my God. Uh, crossroads <laughs> attempts to, oh wait, my arms were down. So wouldn't the pipe actually have hit my arm first and then like basically wedged it to my, to my chest. Oh. Ah, like what? Like what actually happened to what actually happened to the metal as it hit you is that the first point of contact for your electroplasm was the bend in the steel, and it immediately oh. broke it in half. So, like, just two stray pieces of steel now. Okay, cool. Um, crossroads unwedges its head from the ceiling and turns around creakily wondering what spooked it maybe it was another large cat <laughs> uh did ring and i see what happened <laughs> yeah you, yeah, did you the rest watch of him see? fly backward um ash i will say did not notice like anything until after he had been launched backwards but like Ring and Skelly, watch him fly. I feel like Ring and I now are like fighting to get to Mel. We're like both just charging down the hall to try to figure out what happened to him. Mm -hmm. um, both of you enter to like literally watch like the crumpled form of Melvir. Like he was lucky enough to collide with um, a stack of pillows at the bottom <laughs> corner of someone's like like bean bag bed it's a very weirdly shaped bed like so he he was cushioned on his way there with Aww. like some brief interaction with the back wall otherwise but like he's just like like what just happened oh my god are you okay do i look okay i don't know. i mean i don't know you're the doctor bro Crossroads scenario, oh, uh, sensorium, by the way, is completely fixated on this particular person because that doesn't look like a large cat. Um, so it needs to revise its theory of what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your sensorium, like, very obviously picks up a man who is, like, very tired and very afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> Pick me up, please. Is anyone going to help me up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, he takes both of your hands and like both of you lift him back to his feet. And like he's massaging uh, like literally all of him. Like he feels like he's on fire. Um, Is he on fire? Is like, are his wisps of hair like? No, nope, uh, he's otherwise fine. <laughs> Just like very, very surprised. Um, <laughs> What? Why is why why why? And uh, I made it me. He stops and <laughs> centers himself like 
for like a couple of seconds and then he looks straight to Skelly and says, did it ever occur to you that I, a physical who's been working in the trenches for a couple of decades now, would know what a hull is and know it's not supposed to be here? What, she's not allowed to have friends over? Crossroads goes over like it's going to strangle him. <laughs> Melvere's, <laughs> Melvere's eyes open very widely at the sound of Ash asking that question. It's like, people regularly don't have friends here unless their friends are seriously injured. Yeah, uh, it's injured by nakedness. I need to get some clothes. Just chill. It's fine. Crossroads attempts to chill <laughs> while engage to chill I, protocols whatever. while, while trying to, to strangle him. <laughs> Crossroads still has like some ceiling debris on its head, and Ash is trying to catch Crossroads' attention to get at it to bend down and let her clean aim them up a little. Oh yeah, every time Crossroads turns its head, it's like making dust out of the ceiling. <laughs> Uh, Melvir uh, turns to uh, Skelly and goes, are you going to introduce me to your friends? Um, <laughs> I look at them and I'm like, no. <laughs> Fair enough, better for me. Um, yeah, Does anyone I need anything? I can powder, strong alcohol. Ring got injured. I'm just gonna. I'm as uh, oh see, just memory serves. Like oh, yeah, I cooked his hand. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, I would I, kind of, like show a like a kind of minor burned hand. If you've got like a a cream or there's plants that help for that. I remember. Oh well, yeah, I have salves for that. We grow those plants in the back. Sit down over there, and he directs you to his room. Um, <laughs> where like the only things that you see in his actual living quarters other than his own bed are two spare cots that are on the floor on the other corner of the room, um, his medical desk, and three tables um, stacked together um, like that are just like full of beakers and pipettes that are like currently have uh, liquids that may or may not be smoking as you see them. Um, and yeah, he directs you to uh, sit on one of the chairs next to his desk. Um, I'll get to you in a moment. Uh, did someone else need something? Nah, I gotta go feed my cat. Uh, by this Does time, this... Crossers has noticed that Ash is trying to get its attention, so it stopped trying to strangle Melvir and has bent over obligingly for Ash to dust its head off. <laughs> it seems very happy. Uh, Melvir points at Crossroads and goes, does the large one need anything? I have oil or whatever if you need some. Oh, I do have, um, I have taken a lot of drain, like four drain. Um, oh wait, but I have to connect to a charger thing for that. Yeah. I'm gonna say that that's here. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Crossroads kind of grates over from where its head is being petted by <laughs> Ash. <laughs> it, it... Melvira notices that you're about to look at him and immediately like gears up in fight position. <laughs> um, Crossroads doesn't understand that position because people have usually died before they got to that position. So it thinks it's, it's just Melvira being made of meat and strange and says, do you have a gen generator? And Ash pipes up, Sir, it's more scared of you than you are of it, I promise. I've already, have to, I've already had to deal with this one's cat. 
I don't trust things that are more scared of me. There's a generator over there, um, and he like points to like a very large dynamo generator that is next to the tables full of chemicals. There is nowhere to sit there, obviously, but there is like enough uh, open floor that you can just like kind of lie or sit there and uh, plug in and generate very easily. Okay. Um, so Crossroads sees the generator as like, ah, oh, okay, that's how I rest up and stuff. So it straightens up from being crouched over for Ash and then starts going for the generator, then remembers what Runa taught it about politeness and stuff and reaches into its chest and roots around a little and then extends a hand of disintegrated crickets and tips it into Malvir's hand once he understands and reaches out. Thank you. Melvier's, <laughs> Melvier's eyes open very, very wide. Thank and you he for responds, the generator. <laughs> he responds to this gesture of generosity by just staring at you, turning to stare at Skelly. Burst the chili powder on his desk. Pie. It's, it's crickets, man. Just just go with it. Good for you. <laughs> You've been making friends. <sighs> he goes, goes with over. crossroads to help it get plugged in. <laughs> uh, Melvir goes over to ring and starts like opening like a very rusted it looks like um, a large metal tin like like four times the size of what like uh, uh, a tin of Vix vapor would look like, and inside it is um, uh, clarish white cream with like red speckles in it. He takes a good large dose of it, drops it in your hands, and says, "Just rub that generously." Um, and I'll start start doing so. Uh, Ring wants to be kind of like wants to project normalcy, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. which, which I think is just like being very present in the moment, being very attentive to what, uh, what the doctor is saying, kind of make uh, motions that are big but slow to kind of draw, like draw attention, but not take up a room too much and just kind of be chill. Give me a fortune roll, two dice. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Let's see. Oh. I mean, it's not like this character has trauma or anything that might interrupt this attempt. Uh, and Crossroads remove one of the die by being a petrified statue of terror. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna help. <laughs> I'm still rolling two dice. I want to be calm. <laughs> <sighs> Everybody, a one and a six. Chill. That's a six. That's very nice. Because if it were the one, wow. Oh. <laughs> you smack the guy in the face instead. <laughs> Everybody, be cool. This is a robbery. <laughs> right. So you're not like you're not obviously panicking in the way that you would have as a result of all of your myriad traumas. But the thing about attempting to be cool is that that's not cool. So you just seem like very obviously fidgety <laughs> to Melvir. Uh, but Melvir reads that as you being nervous about being around doctors, which is very accustomed for him, which he's very accustomed to. Uh, so that's good for you. Um, I'll take it. <laughs> that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's better than the alternative. So I'm going to say that um, that heals. How much? Wait. How much? Um, how injured were you, Ring? I do not believe you had me mark harm. Fictionally, it may have made sense to do so. So I'm right, happy yes. to to go back and think and ask what you think would be sensible for what we right. described so last session. 
So that harm would have been badly burned, which is the thing that I wanted to be, which is what I wanted to note as a result. Um, but that harm has now uh, been taken away. Okay. Um, the doctor. I will say, however, that it stings very badly. <laughs> like the Why, touch of this cream. And that's how you know it's working. <laughs> Uh, just as a mechanic question, uh, on my sheet it says recharge your capacitors by connecting to a generator as a downtime action. When you do this, clear five drain. I don't know if this particular circumstance would count as a downtime action, so I'm okay with clearing less than five drain. I currently have four. Um, we are not in a score yet, so this counts as free play, which I'm going to say means that we are specifically in downtime at this moment. Um, so yeah, you clear five drain, but you haven't cleared it yet because this is a dynamo generator and no one's turning the dynamo. Uh oh. <laughs> Ash is still working on like the plugs aspect of this because she doesn't know where the consent, consent outlet is on crossroads. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's holding the chest? plug. Is it in my chest, DM, GM? <laughs> um, I know where it is. Um, Ash, give me a roll for looking for it. What do you think that would be? Hmm. Well, Am I allowed to use survey here? Wait, is this a survey or a tinker? Because this is mechanical. You could also ask me where it is. <laughs> I can talk. I mean, that too. You can very well ask Crossroads um, if Crossroads like knows these things and can display this mm -hmm. information very obviously. But also, you're looking at Crossroads anyway, so you might as well look. Hmm. So that's going to be, I think, Tinker probably. Mm -hmm. Controlled position? Uh, yeah, control standard. Okay. And that is a five. Oh. Yeah, um, you can very clearly see that there are small, large, and very, very large outlets uh, across what would be uh, Crossroads Spine that are covered by very thin um, metal plates that display their size. And you can also see as a result that the um, plugs from the generator um, fit small and large, but not very large. Ash is going to ask Crossroads, is this a one plug situation or a two plug situation? Does that charge you faster? What kind of generator would Runa have had for me? Um, the power situation that Runa had sorted out for you previously is that um, there is like a natural kind of like not only did she like use it, not only did she use power that was like drawn from um the general the general power grid, but she also found a way to rig up like what is a vaguely solar powered uh, ordeal and used um a very large plug that would be capable of reducing the similar amount of drain in roughly around an hour. Oh. Um, which is usually around when you would sleep anyway. So you only really know these things because um, Runa's told you what to do in the event that she's not home. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, Crossroads tries to translate that into what to do here and then guesses that, well, two, two, Two. Ash will take Crossroads at its word. <laughs> Crossroads roll fortune. Two uh -oh. dice. I'm just going to say. Why am I doing I, this to you all? <laughs> I'm just going to say. If, if I blow up, I'm going to attune again because I'm panicking at blowing up. Uh, how much? If you, if you blow up, you'll come back and haunt us? <laughs> yeah, oh, basically. <laughs> Two, uh, uh, two die fortune roll. Okay. Two die fortune roll. <gasps> uh, 
I called it. <laughs> and chat, that is a one and a two. <laughs> a one and a two. So is is this, one and a two. Is this okay. miniseries the prequel for the series where we're all ghosts? <laughs> We're having Some power disruptions. We're even having power disruptions in the game, folks. Uh, there you go. I'm sorry, Ash. <laughs> it was good knowing you. <laughs> How electrocuted okay, um, is Ash? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to describe these things in order. Oh god. Um, crossroads. Uh-huh. Heal one drain. Okay. One drain. How do I do that? Okay. Okay, I did that. I now have three drain total. Ash. Mm-hmm. Um, the moment that you plug it in, <laughs> a the moment that you plug in the second uh, plug, a large volt of a volt of electricity runs all the way up your arm. Oh wait, it's a dynamo generator. No one's powering it yet, so. Oh yeah, it it just happens. Okay, just, okay. It just it just so happened to, to have a little bit of juice in that thing at that point in time. Um, uh, mark a level one harm, um, badly <laughs> burned. Your entire okay. Um, your entire arm now has, um, a lightning bolt scar running up from your middle finger all the way up to your shoulder. <laughs> Looks over at Ring and goes, can I get some of that? <laughs> yeah. Long. And if you need to get and if you need to get any of the rest of that drain, somebody else needs to flip that switch. Now knowing that that was a bad idea. What do you do about the fact that you just did a bad thing, Ash? Are you going to take it out? She's looking for something to like cover her hand with as an insulator before she pulls it out. And she's just frantically apologizing to Crossroads because Ash has actually only lived in a place with electricity for the past few years. She doesn't Mm -hmm. really know how it works. She just thinks it's really neat. Like she likes having (laughs) lights and (laughs) clocks. Um, I'm going to say that you find like lots and lots of, um, insulating, uh, layers, uh, near to the generator, um, including lots of rubber, mm-hmm. um, no gloves, but like lots of like rubber, ma- lots of rubber and leather material top that is nearby. So you can mm-hmm. very easily just like, um, yeah, she just picks up. One of up- those. A thing of leather and kind of wraps her hand before she pulls out the smaller plug. Mm-hmm. Okay, and now still someone needs to turn the dynamo. Um, so Crossroads notices that Ash is apologizing a lot and then also realizes that her arm is cooked <laughs> and uh, kind of doesn't know what to do with that but then remembers it also cooked ring's hand which ring hadn't seemed to like very much so crossroads reaches out with a hand that's still kind of fake made of meat and pets ash's head like ash petted its head for no reason that it can think of and digs in its memory some more and says the thing that Skelly says sometimes, there, there. No, no, fine, totally fine. (laughs) Okay. Um, So. (laughs) Skelly comes back and is like, is somebody cooking something? Melvira is like watching you all very silently. <laughs> he, he like he wants to say something to Skelly really, really badly, but not. But he doesn't say anything. He just stays at his desk and watches. Um, 
Uh, are you going to uh, cream your hand now, uh, Ash? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, there is there is enough. Like you walk over to the desk and Melvin, it's just like gestures at it very annoyedly, um, <laughs> and then he decides he's going to get up and actually start turning the dynamo. <laughs> um, because we're all too stupid to know what it does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so yeah. Like, he, like, he comes to the generator and starts yeah. cranking very, very eagerly. Um, and like you can see that it's wearing him out very quickly. But he's also very accustomed to doing this. So like, he's already committed to this, and he does this for maybe like, um, I'm gonna say he gives he gives you a solid fifteen minutes, and oh, that's gonna I, clear. Yeah. Kelly would have taken over, like. I mean, you can very well. Yeah, because but... what once she sees what is happening, then she'd be like, "Here, give me that." Like, okay. Um, and with that effort between you both, that clears all of uh, Crossroads' drain. Thank you. Um, when Ash sees how hard Melvira is pumping, she realizes, "Oh, he wants us out of here really fast. We should be going." <laughs> Did you say that aloud? Actual elbow ring and say that to them. But um, she's going to try and keep her voice down about it. You know, let's be polite. Right. And I think then Ring will offer to sub in for Skelly and say, um, I don't want to pick through your clothes. Since you were going to be getting like trying to say more without saying very much mm -hmm. in front of Melvier. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a lot of clothes, so. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> Skelly goes back to her room and proceeds to find the largest things that she owns. Uh, Crossroads, meanwhile, is scraping the inside of its chest for more cricket dust and gives a little handful to Malvir again, and then also a little handful to Ash as well. Um, when Skelly comes back, they've kind of reached the bottom of their cricket powder reserve, and so Skelly just gets a few pinches. Thanks. Um, what? <laughs> This is a this 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 is a thing that that it it does on a regular basis. Is to, to, Ash to, is putting her little handful of of a cricket powder into a tiny pouch she's pulled out of one of her pockets, and she goes, "It's protein, makes good seasoning." Skelly definitely just shoved it into her pocket and did not think twice about it. <laughs> the sound of you saying that aloud. Seems like to like trigger a light bulb moment in Melvir. And he puts the, the crickets that are presently, uh, th that have just been offered to him in like a small metal tin and closes it and leaves it at his desk. Well, she assumes that he's probably seen some of the, is it like food stands where they sell the fried ones and is just having trouble divorcing it from context. Yeah, that's pretty much what's happening. Um, um, where is Skelly right now? Is Skelly back in this room? Uh, yeah, Skelly has returned and accepted the, the generous crickets <laughs> bestowed um, upon have you. Have you already attempted to dress crossroads? I have the clothing with me. Let us begin. <laughs> <laughs> Roll fortune. One die. Oh, no. I do unplug myself first. I remember mm -hmm. I did that before I put Yes. I don't know why I do this to you all. I'm sorry. <laughs> and a two. Oh, God. Well. It is still way too small. That's all, that's all that happens. You, you, before you can even put it on, you notice before like you attempt that it is too small to sufficiently hide crossroads. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. While yeah. that's happening, Melvier pulls you, the, tries to get your attention to uh, direct you to, the, to his desk. What's up? That's what I want to ask you. What are you up to? You know, stuff. Stuff. Most of the people who live in this building are trying as often as possible to avoid drawing other people's attention. Coming to this place with a hull present that you can barely clothe, let alone keep running, um, is kind of conspicuous. Crossroads, yeah. by the way, has kind of angled its sensorium to this conversation, and instead of listening to their heartbeats, is listening to the subdued conversation. Yeah, we're trying to figure out how to cover it. I probably have some coats. Um, check. And there is no there is no wardrobe in this room. There is just a black bag full of cloth. That's where he keeps all of his clothes. Cool. Um, I keep them in the corner. The bag. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, then I go rummage through the bag and start pulling stuff out. There are some decently sized coats here. Um, any one of them can um sufficiently fit crossroads you can very obviously tell that a lot of the clothing here don't even fit melvir like they're very huge like he like this bag is not a bag of his clothes it's a bag of clothes that he just so happens to have Mm. like as you're rummaging you see like blouses and skirts you see um belts that have been cut in half and mm-hmm. ties that have been frayed and moth-bitten like ages ago. Like it's just a bag of loose cloth. Mm. Hey, Crossroads, it, do you want to try a skirt? Just thinking it'd be easier to get on. <laughs> Crossroads goes over, looks at it. Okay. Looks at Skelly. <laughs> All right, let's do this. <laughs> so Skelly has no sense of fashion. If Ash wants to <laughs> intervene, <laughs> now's the time, because otherwise you're going to get my toddler when she dresses herself. <laughs> no, the thing is, Ash thinks that putting crossroads in a skirt is a good idea because we're not going to have to worry about things fitting the same way we do with pants, mm-hmm. where there's going to be issues of like leg circumference and hem lengths. Will Honestly, it affect a skirt is, it is the <laughs> least of the problems. All right. Ring uh, would yeah. would je- would uh, nudge them toward neutrals and dark colors for being inconspicuous. And just uh, something kind of on the long side, maybe. So Crossroads steps into the hole of the skirt that's held out, and then realizes that. It no longer has one person putting clothes on it, but three people (laughs) putting clothes on it and says, I I don't feel so alone now. Sweet. That's good to hear. Pulls up skirt. It snags on the hip projection things (laughs) and kind of hangs there doing skirt things. (laughs) <laughs> now it's a hole with a skirt on <laughs> uh yeah so definitely just random neutral colored items are now garbing <laughs> crossroads along with some kind of a coat over, over it um i'm gonna say you you very easily find a black shirt like a very dark a black skirt a very dark brown a uh, shirt and the cloak over that is a very um, tan kind of uh, thick herringbone thing. Um, there's also a very crumpled uh, hat here if you want to try that. But like the hat looks like it's seen some days. It's in a mess. Just yeah, like well, so are we. We're not going to judge. <laughs> Fair Let's enough. put the hat on Crossroads. I too have seen some shit. Yes. Uh, and the so they on. put on crossroads. The crossroads now gets a very dark blue trilby. Nice. Yeah. Um, and all of it fits, and all of it allows you to move. 
Um, <laughs> Skelly puts a hand on Crosser's shoulder. You totally, totally look like you're made of meat. Crossroads perks visibly and happily. That's good. Skelly does a pat pat on the shoulder and backs up. So Melvir now sighs very audibly and goes, <laughs> does everyone have everything that they need? And Pretty. Ash is fumbling her wallet out and she's like, what do we owe you for the clothes and the treatment and the electricity? The, the electricity is fine. Um, $30, for, 30 coins for the salve overall. That should be fine. She pays and then she slides a little extra because she feels extremely bad about how much trouble she has caused this man's day. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Thanks, Mel. I owe you some booze. I'd appreciate that a lot. Also, are you sure that you're okay? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Could you uh, mm. keep an eye on Truffle, though? He, like, very nervously glances at the cat, which has been staring at him very intently the whole time. <laughs> um, and then turns his head awkwardly back to Skelly and goes, I mean, it'll watch me. I mean, he knows you have fish, so. I'll keep it alive. Just, uh, I've never seen you get in trouble before. And I've never seen you come to the house with crowds before either. So I have to assume that they're connected. Don't get in too much trouble, please. Working on it. To work harder. Now go. Get out of my place. I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite tired. I need to sleep off being electrocuted. Um, <laughs> See you later. Astro suddenly feels like bad. Crossroads guesses that's a side effect of having a conscience. Um, and just kind of hides in its clothes a bit. <laughs> <laughs> the sight of you flinching puts him in battle mode very briefly, and then he just like straightens himself up, uh, relaxes in his chair and says, be safe. And one of these days you have to cook for me too. Crossroads and perks. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I take it that you all leave? Yep. Yes. Um, so I presume then that it's onward to Dunslow? Yes. Yes. Or Has possibly. anyone decided what kind of plan this was going to be yet? Okay, yeah. So did we want to, um, I think we were going to sneak in. Was that? Um, yes. We were, yes. we were trying to decide between sneak and social or something. Had we picked? I think stealth is probably the approach we want to take. The question is, does something in the information we've already gained constitute an entry point? Um, right. I will say that the information that you would have gleaned in your uh, previous consorts, all of those uh, ages ago, um, let you know that the address uh, that you're headed to is like reasonably guarded, but it is not difficult for you attempt to sneak to attempt to sneak past. But that, especially at this hour, well, at most times in general. Um, there is enough action taking place inside that at the point where you're about to uh, actually gain any information that is useful, you are bound to run into someone. And it is far more um, useful to attempt um, a social instead. How you do so... Um, oh, I just want to say that Twitch is doing matter. things... I don't know if that's, um, I'm seeing a spinning circle on my side. I don't know if that's my internet starting to be weird or if everyone sees. It looks good to me. I, I refreshed and now it's fine. Okay, yeah. Okay. Greg had said he was trying the 
the thing. Um, Powering up the dynamo. I'm fine to try to do some work on social. Um, right. I also have an option that might let us still do stealth, depending on how saleable it is to Brandon. Ah, another very useful uh, uh, bit of information is um, Ring. How much of this, how much of all of your information regarding these things did you immediately uh, communicate to the rest of the group? Uh, I would have. I would have relayed it to everyone on our way to Brightstone. Mm -hmm. Would you have like given them like the briefest of useful information, or would you have tried to tell them everything that you think, everything that you've been told? Uh, I would probably try to talk through as much of it as could be done without drawing attention to at least Skelly and Ash. Okay. Ash, you know that this place is frequented heavily by Severusi. Mm hmm. Mm. That's going to be very important. Um, so, can also, we agree on a plan? I have blueprints, it's on my crew sheet. Well, yes, you do. Um, so, and my uptick uh, contact is August, a master architect. So what I would pitch is we leave Skelly's place and uh, Ring goes a couple of blocks to a basically an, a, an architecture slash contractor firm that basically builds and rebuilds these tenements as they fall apart. And uh, I would like to get blueprints from August for either the building we're going to or a building next to it that would give us the secret way in, unless we all want to do the social plan, at which point I'm fine to drop all of that. Let's start sneaky. This sounds interesting. Okay. Crossroads thinks okay. it can sneak. It tells everybody this with almost confidence. Uh. <laughs> and also, I did draw Ash as a lurk, and she has not used any lurk abilities yet. <laughs> yep. This is indeed true. Uh, which means that now we have to do an engagement role, don't we? Oh. Yep. So um, we should declare a load. Yes, you should also do that. Um, okay. Uh, I'm not carrying anything anymore because everything I was carrying blew up. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> um, so that oh, means, no, that I guess, means I... for your... Uh, um, Ash, I incinerated the haunted doll that was in the pocket of my old clothes. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot yep. about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which um, means that like your load is already light, uh, which is good for you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say like for the purposes of this, you don't necessarily need to tell me what is in your load right now, just uh, what your load is. Um, mm -hmm. and like for very obvious reasons, if stealth is the goal, light is ideal, um, normal, uh, you can get by with, but, uh, heavy might be, uh, particularly trying for you, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my, uh, my load is light. Should I be clicking something else? to roll engagement? No, engagement. We uh, we have to build the dipole. Oh, OK. All right, so let me find those questions. Good. Um, 
So would that, is everyone ready to uh, discuss the engagement drill now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Where do first, I find you, that? Um, the instructions for the engagement rule are on page 128 of the rules. I'm going to read through some of the questions now. Okay. First, you start with 1D for share luck, because obviously. Um, next, is this operation particularly bold or daring? Take plus one die. Is this operation overly complex or contingent on many factors? Take minus one die. I'm going to say it's definitely plus one, mm -hmm. um, which puts you at two right now. Mm -hmm. um, does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? Take plus one die. Is the target stronger? Is the target the strongest against this approach, or do they have particular defenses or special preparations? Take minus one die. Sneaking is very hard in this space. There are a lot of people here. It's mm -hmm. going to be kind of hard for you to remain sneaky throughout. Um, so minus one, um, which puts you back to one die. Mm -hmm. uh, does the friends or contacts provide aid or insight apply here? It does. Um, which means that your architect already gives you plus one. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say, because of the uh, quality of documents at the Batcave, that Runa sending you to Dunsley in the first place um, also counts as a friend and also gives you plus one, which puts you now at three. Um, are there other elements that you want to consider? Maybe a lower tier target will give you plus one die. Uh, maybe a higher, a higher tier target will give you minus one die. Maybe there's a situation in the district that makes the operation more or less tricky. Um, so I have the move um, weaving the web. You gain plus one D on a consort when you gather information on a target for a score. You get plus one D to the engagement role for that operation. Would that yep. apply here? That's, that also counts here, which puts you at four. Okay. Um, uh, which means that I'm going to count that as not only all of the information that you have about the target in general, but the blueprints in particular, the, blueprint, the blueprints that you have as well, also count in that circumstance, which puts you at a total of four dice. Okay. That's pretty good. So, that's actually quite good. Um, Ring, can I ask you to roll that? Uh, sure. And I believe, is there a separate die for engagement roll? I can just do fortune. I'm pretty sure in roll 20, that's a fortune roll with the amount okay. of dice that you've gained. Okay. That's a six. Three, three, one, that six. is indeed a six. Three, three, one, six is mm -hmm. not actually quite bad. Um, we needed every one of those dice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So, because you decided that you wanted to sneak into a place where people are regularly busy, um, I'm going to say that uh, you entered the score very easily enters with you all um, sneaking past what is actually a long series of guards. Like every every each of the four walls of this large building has two guards on either side, even though there are only two entrances in that are not, that are not windows. Um, and they are, I mean, part of how you, how, part of how you can slip past them is because um, 
everyone here is like very, very idle. This place is a place that has never been broken into before. So these people are more or less comfortable. So the, the space that you enter through um, has like a man and a woman leaning against the wall, literally not looking forward as they um, like are very eagerly drinking from um, bottles of beer and having an idle conversation um, in half Akarosi, half Severosi, um, as the diaspora does, um, about uh, which one of them will lose a horse racing bet at some point in the future and what the consequences of losing that bet will be. Um, and you just like slip right past them and you are now in the building. The room that you're presently in is empty and you can hear no one nearby uh, if you exit through this door. Um, Question. Did Ash hear what horses were involved? <laughs> um, they didn't mention names. Um, they did mention that there is a horse race that is coming up um, roughly uh, the morning after tomorrow. Um, and like that's the one that they're betting on in particular. And you sense that the woman was confident was particularly confident in part because she may have done something underhanded to reinforce mm. the stance of her bet. Um, but yeah, um, you are now inside. Um, and very briefly, like I'm going to ask for one thing that you would all like to do. Uh, I would just like to remind the party that um, my sensorium lets me quote unquote see through walls, um, through hearing. So that's definitely what uh, Crossroads is doing right now. Just basically listening ahead and twitching a lot if there is a person. So basically they're kind of like an anxiety meter for if someone is coming. Okay. Is this um, working like x-ray hearing or is this like echolocation or? Um, the rule book just says my sensorium allows me to quote unquote see through walls and hear heartbeats. So I'm imagining some kind of weird daredevil-esque. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm Neat. trying to remember if it says that it's always on. Uh, it doesn't, uh, didn't say anything about me actively turning it on or off. Um, it just says that they are sensors in me, so I... Right. Yeah, so I just... So I am def right, so I am definitely going to say that it is always on, mm -hmm. which um, puts me in the uh, very ego position of being able to let you know. Um, so this comes to you kind of like radar. It's like um, you, are not, you are not only picking up where noises come from and like very easy, very visibly seeing that, that a source of noise is coming from a certain place. But you're also capable of um, detecting uh, heat signals from uh, objects mm. and determine the um, presences of other objects by how noise um, reacts to those things. So you sense um the like the outer wall the inner side of the outer walls of all of of the entirety of this building have this long um shelf running across the uh, entirety of the space just below the ceiling and you see what looks like lots of weird shapes that are very distinctly picking up noise um and you know that that noise is coming from lots of very small rooms and one large central chamber near the actual front of the building, almost all of which is populated by people. The main room is populated by maybe 
14 or 15 people there are two or three people in like random spaces all about you're seeing that a lot of people are very actively very busy you're hearing laughter in a lot of spaces this place is teeming with people you know very obviously that even though if you, even if you were to get from this hall to the next room unscathed at any point after that you are bound to run into at least two people. Uh, Crossroads picks up all of this information and haltingly relays it to the rest of the party as quietly as possible. Um, I just read in the chat that someone noted that will be incredible for Crossroads anxiety levels, presumably about the sensitivity of the sensorium. And yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's why Crossroads um, is panicking all the time. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, which is why I'm going to also point out to Ring that as you gain this information, you are now obviously aware that the place that you need to be is in the center of the largest crowd of people in this building. And that's the very last thing that we're going to that I'm going to uh, share with you this session uh, because we're almost out of time. Uh... Well, um, Iori, I think we've created a situation where Ash is really going to get to flex the lurk powers. <laughs> yeah, oh, the lurk One powers. <laughs> and Ring this, this is your opportunity. by going into the crowd and pretending they belong there. <laughs> this is your opportunity to do max like lurk. Oh God. Uh, uh, but so we got a job. <laughs> We're this doing very... it. We're making it happen. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I'm excited to see how this goes. I have faith in you all. Um, the great thing about this is that all the people, as Crossroads has noted, are clustered in places. So if it panics, it only probably needs to panic once really hard and then everything will be okay. <laughs> I mean, if you want to panic, is it really panicking? That's um, like, that's like the catch 22 that you have. Like you can't, you can't trigger an electroplasm burst whenever you're like, you want. You're like you the Pikachu like and, and Detective Pikachu right. where you're like, I can't do it. Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Crossroads can deliberately attune as well. It's just wouldn't be in the desperate great effect, I guess, because they're trying to deliberately develop that as an mm -hmm. ability. Uh, so we so can deliberately tase people instead of accidentally <laughs> tasing them. Uh, so before we go, we should definitely do some XP stuff. Um, Starting with characters, starting with Crossroads. Mm -hmm. um, have, have you rolled Desperate? Yes, I had the one Desperate Resolve. Mm -hmm. um, so am I putting so that into Resolve or putting that into Playbook Advancement? You put that in Resolve. OK. Ooh. Um. Have you fulfilled your functions despite difficulty or danger? Uh, no, because I tried to murder Malvir, but then my friends wouldn't let me. So I guess he knows I'm not made of meat now. <laughs> uh, fair enough. I'm inclined <laughs> to say that I'm inclined to say that using your sensorium in this um, session as we entered uh, the base in Dunslow counts at least for one XP. Ooh. That I would say so. Okay. Um, upon that, I would have filled my playbook advancement bar. Um, mm -hmm. So you can take one skill. Da -da -da -da. You, can take one, you can take a health rate if you like. Uh, uh, this was something that I wanted to discuss with the other players because the skill I take would impact our gameplay as a whole. So maybe we could discuss that out of stream and then mm -hmm. pick one and then come back and catch everybody up on what I took just to save on time. 
duly noted. I will take note that you have a skill to take. Mm -hmm. As we continue then, um, have you suppressed or ignored your former human beliefs, drives, heritage, or background? Um, still have no idea what those are and they didn't really come up. So I think we're a-okay. Uh, <laughs> I didn't struggle with issues from my wear either yeah. this session. Yes, you have not. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, I would say that's fair. Mm -hmm. Um, next ring. Okay, um, you addressed a challenge with calculation or conspiracy. Uh, I would say that the kind of social noise uh, move mm -hmm. would count there. Um, because talking with August was off camera, I don't think that probably deserves an XP. Um, so I would say just one there. Mm. Um, okay, fair. Yeah, just- I agree. Um, you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, your background. I think filling in the detail about the blue and white flags and like grounding that in like being a, a townie in a very specific way um, mm -hmm. would apply for ring. Um, beliefs and drives. I don't know that any of that other stuff came out so much. Like. I feel like I have a pretty good handle on ring, but I don't know that I highlighted any of those, especially beyond the, the flags. Yes, I would say so as well. So one XP for that as well. Okay, um, and then vice or traumas did not really come up. So that would be two total I XP. Would say, okay. I would say that it did. I will give you one XP because I will say that actually what happened was um, at Melvere's uh, room, that moment when you were attempting to stay cool was also very informed by trauma because you've been yeah. in medic spaces before and the thing that you were trying to avoid as well was also is this going to do is this going to trigger something in me at this moment right. um so yeah i would say you got a total of three xp a session okay i'm going to put two into prowess which will fill my track and then I'm going to take a dot in Prowl. Okay. The other one goes into Playbook, um, which now has one, and that's me. Okay. Uh, Valerie. Yes. Um, <laughs> I feel like, uh, no. Did you roll Desperate this session? No, did not. Mm -mm. Right. Nope, just you addressed the challenge with tracking or violence. Uh, I, I tried to use my tracking skills to get us safely to our destination. Mm. I don't know if I, I don't think I rolled though, so. You, hmm. I will say that while this is, while this is me just kind of essentially justifying off screen, I will say that some part of your interaction as you are about to travel to your house also included some some manner of tracking. So mm -hmm. I will give you one XP for that. <laughs> uh, you expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, your background. Um, you met my cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cat. sure that counts. Although I like the cat, the cat is good. Is wanting to keep scoundrel life and home life separate a manifestation of one of those? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I I was trying to keep Melvier sort of in the dark about what was going on, even as we were making use of his services. <laughs> I mean, that does sound like the kind of understanding, not only that a bounty hunter would have in general, but that a bounty hunter would have with their physicker in particular. So I would give you one XP for that. And you struggled with issues from your vice or traumas during the session? Nope, because you haven't eaten yet. Nope. Um, <laughs> Maybe she's really hungry and starting to get cranky. No. Uh, <laughs> but your maybe, playbook maybe advancement maybe. is finished. Yes. So I'm going to, we're going to also save that for the next session as well. So I'm going to uh, make a note of that um, as well. Which leaves Ash. 
Let's see. No desperate roles this time. Address okay. the challenge with stealth or evasion. We did some prowling this time. Yeah, we prowled the entire way to Skelly's place. <laughs> yeah, big prowl. This 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 <laughs> session was a very prowl heavy session, so I'm definitely giving you uh, two XP. Okay. You expressed your beliefs drives her. Did your background? So, the, putting two plugs into crossroads and getting electrocuted <laughs> will have betrayed to anyone who was paying attention that Ash knows way too little about how to use electrical well, appliances for someone who's supposedly lived in the city her whole life and is like second or third generation Severosi. Could you argue that Ash pat patting Crossroads head is an expression of her background because she was treating Crossroads like a horse? <laughs> no, that was more about Ash, like, Ash is uncomfortable with things being dirty. So she was just like, I'm going to get this dust off this poor, poor robot friend. <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. Ash also, I think. If Ash was going to treat Crossroads like a horse, Ash would be at least six feet away. <laughs> you were trying to be six feet away when we first met because you thought I was made of muscle meat. Wow. I'm going to say one XP. <laughs> one XP. Uh, I'm not going to respond to that horse thing. Um... <laughs> You struggled with issues from your vice or traumas during this session. Nope. I mean, your vice is obligation. I should ask very uniquely, does that like play at all into any of the decisions that you made this game? No, because she wasn't doing anything for other Severosi this session. Right, yes, fair. Um, and now, now that the thing exists, we also get to do, uh, we also get to uh, check for XP for your crew. Oh. Uh, do you successfully escape Captia or gain information about the mystery surrounding you? Mm, not yet. I you avoided guess. those cops that were on the way. I mean, one person did see you and you mm. managed to like scare them off. And I think that that counts for one um and you haven't gained any information yet so it's definitely not there yet um you contend with challenges above your current station um that hasn't happened yet but it's bound to happen next session both mm -hmm. your crew's reputation or develop a new one you don't have a reputation yet uh, and es express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of the crew. I'm going to say every, every bit of your general interaction in Melvere's um, room counts for 2XP as a whole. Because that, <laughs> that was like minor, that, that was like one perfect scene of a sitcom about this game to me. Um, <laughs> I so said definitely too. I said in chat earlier, and I want to put it into the world that this is like a fiasco ghost inhabited a blades in the dark hull. Yeah, I believe it. Um, so with that being said, you now your crew now has uh, three points in its uh, crew advancement. Um, which is bound to continue growing as we continue. Yeah. But that's all we have so far. Um, thank you very much. I'm really excited to see what happens as you leave the room that you're presently in. Um, I have lots of very juicy things planned. Um, but until then, uh, thank you very much for playing and thank you very much everyone in the chat for watching us play um, amidst technical difficulties. Um, I will ask uh, before we leave for everybody to to reintroduce themselves, starting with Joy. With Joy. Uh, yep. So Joy going Lin, pronouns he they. 
um, player of Crossroads, still not made of meat, but will insist on otherwise. Uh, game writer, hopefully dabbling in short fiction soon. Um, that's it. Uh, Mike? Michael R. Underwood. Uh, I'm also the co-host of Speculate here. You can find um, Speculate's Patreon at patreon.com slash speculate. Um, every bit that goes into that uh, Patreon helps us pay our audio editor, Rudy Basso, who is wonderful. We love Rudy. Um, Rudy does great work for us. And if, um, if we're able to increase the support we have there, it makes us easier. It makes it easier for us to keep paying Rudy a good rate as inflation happens and to be able to keep the episodes coming out um, as fast as is reasonably possible. So if you've really been enjoying these episodes and you have a couple of dollars you may be able to spare, um, you can throw them that way. And I have a new book out called Annihilation Aria. You can find more about that at michaelrunderwood.com. Thanks. Uh, Valerie? I am Valerie Valdez, pronouns she, her. I am playing Skelly, and I am the author of Chilling Effect and the forthcoming Prime Deceptions out next month. Please pre-order my book. I have to feed my cats in real life. Thank you. And finally, Iori. Iori Kusano, pronouns she, they. Clarion West class of 2017. Fiction in Apex Magazine, nonfic and reviews in Uncanny and Strange Horizons. You can find me on Twitter or at my website. And I have been your um, non electrocuted GM, Brandon <laughs> O'Brien. Um, I do a lot of things. I briefly had to remove myself from this room in Dunslow for a moment. Hold on. Um, I am a poet, a writer. Um, I am the poetry editor of Fire, a magazine of Black speculative fiction, um, which is planning a convention in October called FireCon that I think would be really rad if you uh, attempted to actually uh, check it out. I've put a link to more information about that in the chat. Uh, the convention.filetmag.com. Um, we are about to announce the ballot for the inaugural, the inaugural Ignite Awards tomorrow on Twitter, and I think that it's going to be rad. Um, I love the fact that Fire on a regular basis goes out of its way um, to respond to weird and messy things that are happening in the sff community by going you know what let's just let's just do better so people just see what it looks like um so yeah i'm very excited to see what that ballot looks like um and you can find out more there um also as previously mentioned i'm doing a thing on this channel in uh, a couple of in a, a good few days um sound clash the clamp down uh, is about to begin uh, starting next week. Our first camp, uh, the first session of that campaign uh, will uh, be live on this channel. Um, expect more news about cast announcements and more very, very soon. I, for one, can't wait for you all to see the logo that has been created by the brilliant Shadowed Mage, who I'm pretty sure is in chat as we speak. Um, I'm really excited. Um, I think it's going to be really, really dope. Um, I just want to let everyone know again that uh, I the uh, finished uh, physical and PDF crew sheet for the fugitives uh, that has been played in this session is available um, on my uh, itch storefront right now. Uh, they made a whole command for it in the chat, so you can definitely find that at otherisingtides.itch.io slash fugitives. Um, and if you just put exclamation point BITD store, uh, you can uh, find that link whenever you want. Uh, so yes, thank you very much for uh, joining us on this um, session. And I can't wait to see what happens when we open the door. Uh, Greg? 
Yes, thank you, everybody. Um, you know, I <laughs> I would have liked to say that I caught more of the session, but I was busy making sure that my house did not get zapped into infinity. I want to thank you all for putting that into the world because I'm sure that didn't have anything to do with my... No, um, I am very, <laughs> very sorry that we had a disruption in the middle of the stream. Thank you for rolling with it. And uh, thank you for what was, you know, seems like another fun session. When I got back and I just heard people being electrocuted, I'm like really life and art are really imit really i mean that's just that's how we do things now um so do me a favor and don't talk about uh you know um college professor authors getting their houses burst into flames just do me a favor and don't put that in the game at all okay because i just i'm sensing a pattern and i you st stop wishing on the monkey paw anyway um but uh thank you so much to the amazing crew uh chat thank you also for hanging with us uh and being able to uh bounce back and forth with them um and i will see all of these lovely people very soon so thank you to yori valerie brandon mike and yoy uh, and we will see all of you folks uh in those places for speculate next month and brandon i will see you um before that i'll see you on friday actually for masters of the dungeon which is a special roundtable show where Brandon is guest starring. And then, of course, for the clampdown with Sound Clash, the new TTRPG from Brandon O'Brien. Thanks, everybody. And uh, we will see you folks soon. All right. Okay. And that is going to do it for us. Again, I am <laughs> sorry um, that that happened. But um, yeah, apparently the, the world was like, hey, you know what you need? You need to have your... And I didn't even notice it at first. Like there was a little bit of a, you know, sort of a little mini brownout in the house. And it was like, oh, because he was, the tech was just testing the stove. I'm like, that's fine. And then my eyes gradually sink down to my phone where I was monitoring. And I'm like, broadcast is ended. I'm like, broadcast. And then I like go running up and all that. You know, so anyway, I... <laughs> Woo. Um, but the good news is I have a stove now. I have a functional stove. So there's that. So we have a stove that works. That's 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 a good thing. Um, and so, yes, it's a functional stove and it all works. And the house did not blow up. So that's that's all money ahead, I'd say, to this point. But I enjoyed this a lot. I hope you folks enjoyed it as well. And to all of our Speculate listeners, again, I want to further what Mike said. Please support the Speculate Patreon if you can. Um, the Speculate Patreon is the way that we, the primary way that we're able to fund editing of this show. And we'd love to be able to do more of these but it's kind of hard to do it when we want to pay everybody and we don't have you know unlimited funds i talked the same way about the patreon for my own channel and that support has been absolutely vital to being able to do things like get ready for the sound clash and all that stuff that we're hosting on the channel so in the same way patreon support helps as well and you can get some special behind the scenes looks at some of the shows that we do as well so it's not just give us money it's actually stuff that gives you uh benefits uh in terms of hearing and seeing more of what happens behind the scenes of some of the shows shows that we do so i'm very excited about that yeah we, it's a gas stove we had a gas stove before and this was a gas stove also literally the electrical is just for the ignition that's all it is like literally it's just the you know the ch -ch 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 little spark that sets it light that sets it alight that's all um and um yeah so that's that's all it is you know pretty pretty simple no the stove does not have wi-fi thank god um, I just need to make sure that everyone is clear that when, how to turn the knob off so the gas is off when you turn the... I don't know. We'll see. Um, also, apparently, I've decided to um, show off my nature crackers. So I guess this is branding. I don't know. Um, anyway, but thank you all so much for being here with part of it. Um, this was really cool, uh, and I always appreciate having these folks around. There's a lot of good chemistry among this group, and it's always fun to watch them from a distance. I just wish I could have watched them more today instead of running around making sure that the uh, house wasn't going to have a circuit blow up. So everything was fine. We're all fine here. Thanks. How are you? Um, if you liked what you saw and heard, uh, first of all, to the Speculate folks, I will say bye for now. Thank you so much, Speculate listeners. And you can find more of us, by the way, at speculatesf.com. And for everyone else who's watching me on Twitch, thank you so much for being here and being a part of this. Um, particular thanks as well to the players, to Yori, um, to Valerie, to Yoy, and to Mike. Um, and of course, to Brandon, the GM, for continuing to shepherd this intrepid crew uh, along the way in the mystery of the Cindered Seal. And thank you especially to all of you in chat for hanging out and I hope having fun with them as you did so. If you like what you saw here, please make sure to follow the channel. Please support us uh, by checking out the YouTube, which has gotten some more subscribers as of late exclamation point arv tube for that twitter is exclamation point arv tweets that number is also at an all-time high so that's great uh you can follow me over there for information about writing gaming um streaming obviously teaching music family and yes there'll be some politics here and there because 
2020. Um, and uh, all that can be found on my website, arvinelleron.com. On the financial side, exclamation point arvtreon is the Patreon, although I'm mostly talking tonight about the Speculate Patreon that I want you to focus on. Uh, but that Patreon is available to you. Also, the uh, webs, the store, I should say, is exclamation point Arv Shop, which has Adventures of Middle Earth merchandise and Curse of Strahd, the uh, Infinity and Beyond merchandise, I should say right now. Soon to have some Esper Genesis merchandise over there as well. And last, the sub button, which is currently, we're sitting at about 85, 86 subs. I think I might have seen that Mike actually resub Turbo Tango, so thank you, Turbo Tango, for that. I appreciate that very much. Um, and you can find information about my publishing projects there as well. Exclamation point Icarus is my Icarus and Jelenic graphic novels, which are being sent to reviewers and to places for blurbs as we speak. Um, you can also, um, as you're looking for things about my publishing stuff, uh, take a look at Exclamation Point Library. That's Tales and Tomes from the Forbidden Library, my 5e adventure and source book put out by Alligator Alley Entertainment. That is a silver seller on Drive-Thru RPG and is going to be coming out in print very soon. And Exclamation Point Gray Shade KS, which is my Gray Shade Kickstarter announcement coming in the next couple of days as to whether the Kickstarter for that will be happening in October or in February of next year we will see um but uh yeah that is that is going to be coming up um pretty soon so you'll know what's going on with that as far as that's concerned and last but certainly not least and extremely importantly exclamation point blm black lives matter which gives you a link to various resources um educational resource to educate yourself to educate others to be a good ally to educate your kids and also resources to be able to donate and support various organizations uh that are working and trying to further the idea that black lives matter um, it is extremely important, and we are going to continue to talk about that on this channel through doing many different things. One thing, for example, that is connected at least to that. I mean, I'm excited because it's a great game. It sound, it's just going to be an awesome game. But beyond that, the connection to it of what we have with Clampdown uh, and Soundclash, which is going to be coming up next Sunday, as we said, coming from Brandon. Schedule-wise, Saad will be back with you tomorrow night, Monday evening at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern for more of A Grumbler's Guide to Sword Coast Legends. He's going to be moving into the DLC for that. And then Tuesday, we have a very busy day. We have Adventures in Middle Earth coming at around noon Eastern. Then at 4 p.m. we have D&D with GOG, Storm King's Thunder. And then that night at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have the amazing R vocalist doing a voiceover run of Paper Mario, the Origami King. You will not want to miss that. Wednesday, we have Community D&D uh, with Dragon of Ice Spire Peak with the Shadow Crew. So Shadowed Mage and then Trishy Mats, Echo Alpha X5, Rock God, and Hoodie will all be with you for that amazing adventure. That'll be happening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thursday, we will have off. And then Friday, we have got Masters of the Dungeon, my D&D roundtable show, which will be myself and Brandon guest starring. Little Red Dot will be off for that one. And then uh, after that, I'll be playing some more Kingdoms of Amalur main quest stuff. And then Saturday, we have more D&D &D with Infinity and Beyond Curse of Strahd. So that's what we've got coming up. And then Sunday, the big premiere, as I said, of uh, Sound Clash, the Clampdown campaign. So that's what we've got going on over the next week. If you like what you saw and heard, do all those cool things to follow us. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you to my wonderful mods, Rudinell and J-Rab. Thank you so much to my wonderful subscribers, Rudinell, J-Rab, Nonstop, Rising Tides, Trishy Mats, and Turbo Tango. And of course, thanks again to the players that are among that group. Thank you so much to uh, the folks who support the Patreon as well, which don't get necessarily listed there. Thank you to 1FPS, Commander Root, Determinologies, Diginferno, ECAG, Gigafrost, um, uh, Kusani Yori, again, thank you, uh, Yori. Um, thank you to Let's Do This Streamer, to Lurks, to Renirin, um, thank you to The Kids Are Asleep, I love that name, you Christensen, and Zebchi. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that's all I got to say. Thank you all, everyone. Oh, hey, what's up, Ananda? And also Ananda, who, unless I'm mistaken, this is the Ananda from GOG, in which case, welcome, Ananda, and thank you um, uh, for being here and being a part of this. But thanks, everybody. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much to the players and the GM. And again, my apologies for the little... Um, power glitch, which hopefully won't happen again. Uh, that's going to do it for me. I'll see you folks tomorrow uh, night at 7 p.m. Eastern for Sod and a Grumbler's Guide to Sword Coast Legends. Until then, yay, it is indeed oh, awesome. One of my fellow GOG streamers. Until next time, uh, much love to everyone and everyone be good to each other. Bye-bye for now.